I am Elisabeth Nemeth, and I'm professor of medicine in the Department of Medicine at David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. And I have been working on iron metabolism for the last 20 years. And I actually started working on iron metabolism together with Dr. Gans, Dr. Thomas Gans, who is distinguished professor of medicine and pathology, also at David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. And Tom's career has really been impressive. He is, has discovered several hormones, uh, including hepcidin, the arm regulatory hormone, and erythroferone, an erythrokine. And he has rightfully received many awards for it from International Byron Society, as well as American Society of Hematology. And today we're talking about the interaction of iron metabolism with erythropoiesis, or the production of red blood cells. And here's Dr. Thomas Gantz. I'm Dr. Thomas Gantz, a professor of medicine and pathology at UCLA. Um, this is my colleague, uh, Elizabeth Nemeth. Uh, she's also a professor of medicine at UCLA and has been my colleague and close friend for the last 20 plus years. Uh, together, we have analyzed the regulation of iron in the body and together we have discovered and characterized two hormones, hepcidin and erythroferone. Uh, today's discussion will concern erythroferone, which is the hormone that connects iron metabolism to the production of red blood cells. So maybe we could start discussing about why iron is important for the production of red blood cells. Yes. So if you look at the amount of iron in the body, most of the iron in the body is in red blood cells. In fact, uh, of the four grams that an adult male has, about two and a half to three grams are in the red blood cells. Um, the rest of the blood actually contains very little iron. So if you look at the amount of iron in blood plasma, it is 1,000 times less than the amount of iron in red blood cells. So it's only a few milligrams. Um, so red blood cells uh, are all about iron. And the iron in red blood cells serves a critical function because it is the iron that coordinates oxygen. So the ability of hemoglobin to bind oxygen is entirely due to its content of iron. The iron sits in the middle of a heme molecule, and that heme molecule is embedded in the hemoglobin protein, four hemes per hemoglobin. But all the work essentially is being done by iron. So there are four iron atoms in hemoglobin. So how much iron do you need to produce new red blood cells? And how many new red blood cells do you produce per day? On the average, red blood cells live about 120 days, which is four months. So every day, you have to replace, at steady state, one 120th of all your red blood cells. And that requires um, 25 milligrams of iron, which is most of the flow of iron that it, it takes place in the body. So most of the iron, 80% or more, goes towards making red blood cells. When red blood cells outlive their 120 days, that iron is recycled by macrophages and it is put back into the production of red blood cells. So there is a recycling circuit that operates in the body. But what happens when uh, somebody bleeds um, and loses some blood and needs to make more red blood cells. So in steady state, uh, everything's as I described it. But if you go to the blood center and donate a unit of blood, um, that represents about half a liter of blood, of which anywhere from 200 to 250 milliliters are red blood cells. And that contains 200 to 250 milligrams of iron. So after you donate that unit of blood, you're going to have to reconstitute red blood cells. And to make those red blood cells, you need 200 to 250 milligrams of iron. And that comes from two major sources. The first of those sources is the absorption of iron in the intestine. And that increases after you bleed or after you donate blood. That absorption goes up several fold. Uh, depending on how much iron there is in the diet. The second source of iron is your stores. 
the average adult male has about a gram of iron in the liver in stores and some of it in the spleen as well. Women have much less iron storage, but that iron has to be mobilized and delivered to the bone marrow to make new red blood cells. So that all has to be coordinated in response to bleeding. Well, one of the interesting questions would be why do women have less iron than men? Um, well, much of it is probably due to menstrual blood loss, but some of it is also diet. Women clearly uh, tend to avoid iron-rich foods, uh, at least in our culture. And so um, uh, some of it is dietary and some of it is menstrual blood loss, which can be quite substantial. And also in many women, childbirth will decrease their iron stores. Absolutely. A lot. So every, every childbirth uh, leads to loss of iron, both because the fetus needs iron and also because of associated blood loss during delivery. If we look at the major cause of iron deficiency anemia, um, what would you say in the developed world, like the United States, what is the major cause of iron deficiency anemia? There's absolutely no question that it is bleeding. Bleeding uh, fr from any source, loss of blood from the body is the cause of iron deficiency anemia. Because let's just consider the average man who um, has one gram of iron in storage the, the loss of iron from the body normally is only one to two milligrams. So it would take at least 500 days for someone to lose enough iron to deplete their stores. If the only source of iron loss is the normal loss of iron from the loss of small amounts of intestinal lining, shedding of skin, and such. But as soon as you start bleeding from any source, every mil of red blood cells is a milligram of iron. So if you bleed, uh, let's say, a unit of blood, there goes 250 milligrams of iron, which is essentially more than 100 days of normal losses, which you can lose all at once. So bleeding is the co major cause of iron deficiency anemia. Now, much, it's much more rare to have dietary uh, iron deficiency anemia, it would mean that you're on some weird diet that essentially contains no iron or binds up the iron, but that is extremely rare. So iron deficiency anemia, by definition, means blood loss. Well, how about if we look at people who are vegetarians and are not consuming meat, which is the source of food that is high, has highest iron content. If people are vegetarians and they're young women, they could, just based on the diet, um, develop chronically iron deficiency anemia. Yes, but it, it also requires menstrual blood loss. So, um, which is we, physiological. Which is physiological. And that combination of, of menstrual blood loss and an iron deficient diet, um, such as in vegetarians or vegans who don't eat nuts or some other veg vegetable sources of iron, um, that is enough to cause iron deficiency anemia. But it, the blood loss is part of the picture. There's absolutely no question about that. Perhaps also people who donate blood regularly, they're at much higher risk. Yes, and that, that's a relatively common problem, especially in high schools where kids donate blood because they want to be part of the effort, collective effort to provide blood, the blood supply. Um, young women who donate blood are at high risk of developing iron deficiency. So one conclusion we can make is that at steady state, the system regulates itself and is uh, cruising at, at uh, the level that we described, which is that 25 milligrams of iron are harvested from uh, of old red cells and they are reused to make new red blood cells. But after a bleed, the system actually goes into a stress mode and absorbs more iron and um, also mobilizes iron from stores. And how that happens is something that we will discuss in the next installments.